very fluffy powder. It's what I need in consistency. Let's see how this plays. I'm not gonna give any time to see how this plays. I'm using a lot bigger brush though. Then I gotta hold it a little bit longer. Okay, it's like a nice medium. The color comes kind of always a little bit darker but when it's wetter. When it's dry, it probably gets lighter, like more the color. But it does some medium consistency. Mm. So the key is to wait to see how long it takes for this to dry. Usually, my rule of thumb is about 30 seconds. If this dries about 30 seconds, I like it. Is this live? Is this live? Yeah, this is live. I'm, I'm, this is my first time trying it out too. So yeah, it is fine. Let's start picking up a bigger bead here. Oh, there you go. So it's, it doesn't run. You can see the bead actually stays on. Oh, that's a good sign. I guess you know that it's... But... This is what I like about powders. The only time I ever use powders is if, if it stays the shape and doesn't run. But still be able to move, move it. One of the biggest issues is some powders are either too runny or too dry or too dense. So that even though it's hard, I can just put light pressure to it. And I'll be, with, I'll be able to break it into the powder here. I don't like doing tutorial videos where I don't have to use my brush. I have to actually use my brush because that's the only way you can be able to feel the powder. So yeah, okay. It's probably a little bit. It's like almost like a mob. Um, reminds me of uh, Don't Boss Me Around by OPI, the polish. So this is a nice mauve -y color. Mob. I don't know. If, yeah, you guys probably see it on your screen too, right? Thanks, it looks weird in your end. Is it blurry or something? I want to try this pink though. This pink is called Soft and Sweet. Soft and Sweet. Interesting. Pinks and light nudes are my go-to when it comes to cover powder. It's great for designs. Yep, they're all, they're all the same consistency. This is like a cover pink, like a light cover pink for those that have used like, you know, young nails or something like that. So I'm gonna hold it just a little bit longer, get a bigger bead. There you go. It's a moderate bead. Anytime you pick up powder, you want to make sure that it's... Oh, this pink is pretty. This pink reminds me of Chisels 15 OMB. Okay. I see, I see what they did here. I see what they did with the powder, for sure. Um, that they told me to try it out. I, I work with Chisel, uh, with Wave Gel a lot. They sent me a lot of products and I tested it out. I, I can see what they did with it. So this is more acrylic based. They add a little bit more acrylic than pigment. So. Definitely don't have to cap these powders. For a lot of you guys, that be, I, I, I wish I had some here to show you. The very pigmented powder is when you when you put it on. Or how to say when you try to drag it, uh, pigment powder when you try to drag it, it just goes. Dra Sorry, I have some weird connection right now. Weird connection right now. Sorry, guys. But the pink actually comes true to the color. So when this dries, it'll be, it'll be a little lighter. So you definitely have to use this pink on top of a natural tip, not a clear tip, because a clear tip will give it more. All right. Let's try a darker pink. This one is called Dash of Sass. Okay. Got some unique names here. And I, I, I'm not having to test the powder, I can already tell that they're all trying to same consistency. They changed it up a little bit, the formula. So this formula is a little bit less pigmented, this collection. Interestingly enough. Which I don't mind. There is a level of pigment that you can get with the powder that, you know, at some point, that's all you need, you know? No more pigment is going to make it any darker. It's getting that perfect ratio. That's what I'm interested in. Is. I would like this bead a little bit bigger, but I guess I should not complain. I don't 
you can see it from your end, but from my end, you can tell that the powder is more acrylic based, which I don't mind as long as I have time to work with it. Generally, a lot of times with powders that are more acrylic based, the acrylic dries faster, so a lot of beginners, they, they struggle with it, with it. But with my monomer, actually, it really works really well. I've always said that wave gel is the best, works the best with my monomer. Oh, it is smooth. Okay. Very smooth. Okay. I, I like this. Good job. Hmm. It's a new serenity question. Use that brush to brush in that powder, you know? Get it smooth. Like you're doing a full set, you want it smooth, consistent surface. So you want to do a lot of filing drilling like that, okay? Interesting. Let's try it. Let's try one of the neon colors. Neon green. This is definitely going to be more pigmented for sure. For this to be this neon, it has to be pigmented. Wow. This is vibrant. So we know this, this is going to be pigmented for sure. Yeah, the color is actually really nice. I'm. What's the gel polish? Want to try the whole system? Um, the gel polish actually one of the best gel polish on, on the market. Wave Gel started off as a gel polish company, and they got into acrylic, so they re they really refine. You see a lot of companies that really that really have great acrylic. Their gel polish are not really up to par because they don't really focus a lot on their gel polish. So their 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 gel polish just for them to have like as an like a bonus, you know. Let me see that. Let me try my fourteen brush. Try my 14 brush this time around. So wave gel is a oh I don't even feel it. Okay. Look at that. The, the key is when I work with this powder, is it gonna marble? <laughs> I can already tell it's not gonna marble. Most of the time, no matter how companies will do it, there is some slight marbling. But if they give you time to work with it, as in you give you time to um, brush it in, that's all I care about. A lot of times it marbles so much and it dries up so fast that we don't have we don't have time to mar we don't have time to work in the marbling. So yes, you see how this is a lot more smoother than the other one because it's, there's a little bit more pigment in this one because you can't really you have to really be able to get that pigment in. I like to brush the powder in because that that gives me the ability to feel the powder. So a lot of guys that do. Um, Squash sticks. Make sure you're brushing the powder because you can feel the consistency of the powder, and you kind of you kind of understand like what kind of powder you're using and how it works. Letting it drip, you're not gonna be able to get that mastery down. I like to you know understand the powder, but this color is actually very true to its original color too. That's very hard. But the powder is always gonna be a little bit lighter in powder form. Do you find that you have to cap? Wave gel with clear powder for strength, or does it work as a core powder? Wave gel is a core powder. Um, the only powder I know that you have to cap is Young Nails, Slick Pour, um, Valentino's uh, pigment powders. Those are the ones you have to cap. Um, wave gel is one of the colors that you don't have to cap. I don't really use colors that have to cap because that's not my style, and it, it will throw me off. I'm gonna try this bright orange. You can already, I can already tell when I open it that it's all the same consistency. I'm watching this, I think I'll be changing brand soon. Something for this one. Um, if you want the Serenity collection, I can get a better deal than what you can do to buy them off the website. So you can, if you have a salon and you want to invest in a whole collection with a gel polish to match, um, just DM me. I'll be able to get you my my deal. Um, it's like it's like better than a promo code. Way better. Oh, it's pretty firm. Yeah. This is what I like to see in powder. A little bit of firmness. And to be able to work with it. See? Slight touches and it'll move the powder. It looks like it's dry, right? Plus it's the monomer in action too. Like I told you guys, monomer is always the biggest component when it comes to how it reacts to powder. Oh, I really like this orange. You know what this orange reminds me of? Like those um orange popsicles that that we used to my, the, my thing is that this you don't have to cap guys 
it's already a core powder. Once you put it on, once you get done with the 10 fingers, it's gonna be drying up to the final drill shape. But truthfully, the color to the actual powder is actually very, very, very similar. So not bad. They took in my notes. <laughs> I, uh, let's do a dark brown. This is brown sugar. Ooh. It looks like brown sugar. <laughs> Thank you. I'm basically okay. Oh, mm, I don't know. I don't know this ship internationally. That's something I don't know. But anybody in the United States that's looking for it, if you have a salon or you're in need of a, a big collection, I have a direct collection of gel. Oh wow, I surprised to test that part out. I know for sure I'm gonna need a little bit more monomer because this is more um, acrylic based, so you need more monomer. Okay, let me try out the monomer. It looks firm, but when you put it on, actually, it, it gives you a lot of time to it starts to run. But not dripping. See it? It doesn't drip. You ever seen videos with people doing this? Like, just let it drip. This doesn't drip. It gives you the ability to mold and work. I like using my brush more than the gravity when it comes to um, doing application. Sugar. This would be a nice brown for some ooh, powder marbling. I mean, let me try to marble this these powders. Like generally, when you're doing powder marbling, anything pigmented will be working the best. be a nice design with some glitter and some gel marbling on top of this. So yeah, this is pretty good for gel powder marbling. Look at that. You just cap that with clear. Put some other stuff on top. I'm going to save the sample and if I do. How you know when the cap? Um, what do you mean? How you know when you have the cap? Well, we all know what companies you need to cap with. Um, uh, Young Nails, Valentino. Not their uh, cover powders, their pigment colors. Um, they recommend you to cap it. Um, that's just a uh, common sense. They'll tell you that. Sunday. <laughs> Those two colors, yeah, they do really go really well together, surprisingly. Let me see like an ombre. I hmm. always gotta test everything, you know? Gotta test out the ombres also. The dark color on the bottom. Let's do brown sugar on the bottom. Let's see, let's see the coverage on this. 
Why don't you give us like five seconds? One, two, three, four, five. When ever you use a powder that you see that when it's it just stays rubbery and you can like put your finger on it and you can put indents in it, that means that color needs to be capped. There's uh, too much pigment in that color for the acrylic to dry it. So it needs to be assisted by capping. So in general times when you work with those companies, you gotta do what? You gotta make sure that you have clear on hand and you have to cap. And usually it's very pigmented powder that comes in a smaller container. Um, so you don't use a lot of it. You have to do it very thin and cap it on top. Let me give this a little bit more time to dry before I try to ombre these two colors. get hasty when I do the ombre uh, like demos. <laughs> Just give it some time. To test the nudes, the neons, and purples, light purples. That's a very good way to tell if that powder is for you. Um, it's very hard to stay consistent with all colors because the way it's mixed. So, yeah, I mean, at some point I give them a, a little bit of a break, but if all the powders are difficult or like a, not consistent, then it needs some more work. Alright, let me change that. No, 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 Oh, sorry, I'm too zoomed in, I'm sorry. I'll do it again. See that? that that's the 
acrylic residue that's deposited into your dampen dish. So when you clean your dampen dish, you gotta make sure that you get all that rim out. This is in fresh monitor and it's contaminated again. I'm, I'll use my medium setting. Um, this demo based on my monitor, okay? Your monitor may be different. You may be using a slow setting monitor. It can be more runny. Um, you may be using a faster setting monitor. It can be more not runny. So my monitor is a little bit different. It's a medium setting. Okay, let's do this purple again. Monomer, clean brush. Oh, you see the difference? So big the beat is. Such a big difference when you test it, when you change out the monomer. So a lot of you guys start running into issues when you're working on sets, mid set. It's not you. It's the, the monomers change, probably contaminated with a lot of other products. Very smooth. I can probably give this like another 10, I can let this sit for like 10 seconds, I'll still be able to work with it. Let's just do it. Let's just let this sit. I'm gonna let it sit right here. Glitters like this are very hard to work with because the way it's mixed, but let's see. Ooh, I can already feel it's gonna be a big bead. It's almost like a milky white with a shimmer to it. Like an iridescent. You probably see this air. air ooh. What does this remind me of? Pearlescent pearls. Oh, definitely gonna be mar marbling with this. So it's white, so it's almost like a off-white. A little more time there before I start moving it. That's it, I don't like moving the powder when it's still too wet. So you have to move it and you have control of it. Just like that. these three colors together. Oh yeah. What color did I use earlier? Damn it. Did I see something? Uh, something, something. This. Wait a minute. Test this yet.
There's a few ways to do the this marble. You don't have to do it the way I'm doing it. The way I'm doing it is a little bit harder. I suggest doing it like one color at a time. I'm just used to doing it this way. Almost like a cappuccino. You always want to do this a little bit thinner so that you can go through and then get the cap it. Mmm. Gives it a little bit of a shimmer, not too overpowering. Ooh. Ooh. Almost like a milky. Let me try it this other way. So I've seen people do it this way. I don't even know if I know how to do it this way, actually, to be honest with you. Let's put powder up. Make sure it's very wet. Another powder. You definitely would have to do this thinner though. Yeah, this actually, this way is not bad. I like this way. I probably want to put like the brown down first, then use the white over it because the white will just blend in with that white. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Definitely will keep it thinner for sure. Just get really wet and just dab it on. You can probably do, you can do this any color, neon colors if you, want, if you have to. You can do so much with this. Um, put glitter on the bottom. This looks like, ooh, yes. This is a set right here. You do a whole set like this. Two finger, four finger design like this. That's death to it. If I did, if I did clear, clear powder on this, and I did the gel, like gel uh, break lines in here, it would look like a rock. I like that. It's almost like a cappuccino pie. This is definitely fall right here in November. Orange glitters. Like, yeah, the glitter here. Yeah. Ah, this glitter? Hold on. I think this glitter is more of like a, a compliment color for you to put on top of stuff, not really by itself. It's called Frosty Snow. Who would've got who would have guessed it? Hmm. This is the one I wanna see. It's an orange glitter. It's called I'm falling for no no. It's called Pink Flash. Oh, it's pink. I thought it was orange. And the glitter was missed in. Ooh. Shoot. I only got... Uh. Alright, let me use it on a black. I, I'm gonna save this white one because I wanted to do an, um, a marbling one just for the end of life here. So it's pink. It's just in there. It has a little bit of glitter. Oh, it is pink. Okay, so, alright. I know that. I know that is. Because I wanted to do it with this. I want to mix these two together. Make like an orange dream, pinky dream, ombre, marbling. Not enough pink. This on top of a clear tip, ooh. I like, I like. You did this on top of like a clear, and it shows through. Yeah, I 
I like that. <sighs> On top of a clear, put some like a. Uh, I can only imagine this with a top coat. Just put clear on this and start doing designs on them. We don't got the time for that today. Wow. All in all, I like that. Um, no, I don't. I don't know if they ship internationally. You have to see. You would definitely have to see if they ship internationally. But. You got marble samplers like this on your on your on your station. Your clients your clients be spending money. I like these clear powders because they're very they complement single color marbles and it doesn't overtake. I see a lot of times we use glitter and, and powder marbling and it just overtakes everything. But hmm. well, let me give my honors review. Um, if you want my honors review, this powder can definitely be a little bit more smoother for sure. As in. Uh,